Um, let's ask on stage Laura from Broekhoven, from the just as exotic city mm -hmm. Leiden. Um, Laura, you're you're an archaeologist, you're a curator for for uh, Middle and South America at the Ethnographical Museum in Leiden. Yes. Um, I can come up with some of the case studies from uh, our museum, which has started already much before I started working at the museum. There's been some people who've done work in Mali, who've done work in Thailand, and I just put uh, a couple of the um, examples here. Um, and I think the most important part is that uh, a couple of the projects really focus on um, working together with institutions, with uh, natural, it can be ministries, it can be museums, and others uh, work together with source communities, and that's a much, much more recent um, development, I think, that we work together with communities in source uh, countries. Some of the people that have influenced our present day um, uh, work is, for example, uh, this lady who's uh, Anne Finne Brierden, who brought in the 80s people from Yupik elders. Uh, they, from Alaska, brought them to Berlin to look at collections and do uh, source community consultations. Um, and there's some other projects in Mali, which we've worked with amazingly uh, people. This Laura Pierce is one other inspiration mm -hmm. source uh, who works at Oxford at the Pitt Rivers Museum, who has worked a lot with Blackfoot and other uh, Native American and uh, First Nations mm -hmm. in Canada. And then we have some projects in, uh, in Mali, which have both an archaeological component, but also working with masonry uh, guilds, uh, reconstructing a lot of uh, Anit Schmidt and Rogier Bedo were important in that. And then there's project in, uh, in Indonesia, and there it was much more where we wanted to see how we could celebrate 50. So there's many mm. ways in how these projects can develop. You also invite groups of people from the source communities to Leiden right. to look at what you have in your collection to right. tell you about it, to maybe give you ideas how to present it. Exactly. Can yeah. you give an example of so that? The Maori example is an example where we actually returned mm -hmm. a head, a uh, tattooed head, and from that um, came a, a, a project um, where we've worked together with the Maori to put up an exhibition, but also to make a waka, uh, which is a, a sacred canoe, uh, which has been made for us. And they came now, we just opened this exhibit a couple of weeks ago when 40 of the Maori yeah. came here. And also that's one of the projects we worked with. Uh, we didn't really look at much of our collections with them. But the next project... Um, would be, for example, a project uh, which is called Roots to Share, which we're setting up together with the uh, museum. And here we invite people from uh, the area of uh, Greenland, the Inuit, to come and look at our collections, to get inspired by the collections. Mm. And that's for them mainly. They've many times, they themselves have asked to come to yep. look at the collections. Many of these collections have not been kept at their uh, places of origin. And uh, this is another example where we've invited people from Brazil. Uh, well, actually, the Brazilians, they asked us that they wanted to come to our museum, make new collections, mm. and uh, sell them to us without us having seen the collections. Now, how, how do you... I mean, this is obviously enriching your museum. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with um, um, the tension that, yes, you can develop your collection and the presentation of it mm -hmm. um, to the audience here, while the community itself is miles away. Right, and and who 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 was invited to come yeah. and you yeah. know where's the inclusion and exclusion? Because this is the ideas. basic difference between yes. the museum mm -hmm. we've exactly. been talking about. Yeah. Of course, now. we are not embedded in mm. the society there because we are not there. We are here. Um, much of the collections obviously are there, uh, are here. They're not there, and much of the knowledge from a broader community is there and not here. Uh, so in that sense, what we've what we've decided to call these projects sharing knowledge and cultural heritage and inviting. Uh, um, certain people, but putting out also uh, projects which uh, are able to reach a much bigger pro uh, public. A good example, for example, is the Roots to Share, we've, where we've, we've invited certain people who are knowledge carriers. We try to invite people who are people who really are very knowledgeable on uh, certain areas of expertise, let's say, that we've usually have established either us or partners like uh, Leiden University or other partners would have established already a lot of contact, long-term contacts. We think much of this is very much embedded in long-term relationships, building long-term mm. partnerships. Um, and 
Through that, people who come to our museum become representatives of a bigger community. It doesn't have to be the whole of the community because it's very clear that there's no one voice for one community, even of 300 or 400 people. Yeah. Um, so we don't want to be a representative of all the knowledge that exists, mm. and we don't. Be, but people need to be someone that we think we can work with, mm. uh, and that they think they want to work with us. Mm. Um, and in that sense, so. For example, the Roots to Share has, is starting up a website where uh, about 8,000 pictures which are taken from a certain area are kept in our, preserve, in our uh, collections and in the museum's collections, will be put on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have an exhibition also which is traveling through Greenland uh, and which will, of course, expand also again here. The museum is going outside of its walls. Um, and the whole idea of the of the website is that there will be a possibility of social tagging, mm -hmm. and that's because this there's there's an exhibit which has been traveling since 2001 or something already through the whole of Greenland, at the request of local communities. Uh, it was not intended to be an exhibit which was going to travel, uh, but at the request of local communities, they've asked, "Can you please have it travel?" And we've noticed that people were saying, "Ah, oh, this is this guy, and this is that guy, and oh yeah, that's when how it was in those." days and so this is something that um, out of the request of the communities it comes forward the same happened for example with the Brazilian communities the Surinamese communities mm -hmm. also we've invited them and now at their request a lot of has come forward from that uh, 2007 we invited some people and what they said is we want to come with a lot of people representatives of mm -hmm. the different communities and look at these materials and know what you have on them mm -hmm. so that's what we started to organize yeah. Um, they looked at our collections and they told us we don't want to have to look through colonial eyes mm -hmm. and not just answer your questions. We want to be also the right. ones who are asking the questions. That is the crucial thing, of course. Right. Yeah. And so one of the things we needed to have ready is all the information that we have, all the background, as much as we could get, mm -hmm. and also have certain specialists with us who had been working on the languages, could be translators, could be knowledge carriers. And the idea was not to just share this cultural heritage, but also share the knowledge which exists on them. Yeah. So these are some pictures of where we look at pictures. Give us one example of mm -hmm. how they actually shook up the, the organization, the, the perspective of your museum. I think mainly also for the curators, uh, the re restorers uh, point of view, for example, looking at pictures, naming, uh, naming them, giving them identities. Uh, that was one of the things which was very important. You could see like, oh, these pictures are, uh, these pictures are becoming alive again. But in objects also, the way they would handle the object, this was lived knowledge. It was not just knowledge ca coming from books or coming from mm. looking at them, but repairing and restoring some of the objects, yep. bringing them back to yep. life, starting to show how they were used. Um, for our restorers also, you can see some of them going like, oh, <laughs> this is okay. Mm. So it's also in the, in the practice of how you handle objects. And this was very much, on the other hand, it was also we thought maybe there will be questions of repatriation coming mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Um, it's something that you have to be prepared as an institution and you know that there might be questions of repatriation. And that startled me a lot that they did not ask at all for mm. repatriation of the mm. objects. Mm. They did want to have repatriation of the photos in mm. a digital form. Mm -hmm. Um, and repatriation of knowledge, that was yeah. very important, and also technical assistance in certain areas. Um, which you were able to provide to a certain extent. Exactly, which we are still in, in, in uh, seeing process. how in the process yeah. of providing. We've provided a lot of uh, knowledge, I think, sharing of knowledge, I yeah. mean, and also just being involved in the process today. So they say that we don't, we don't want to be studied as objects anymore. Mm. We want to be part of the process. Right. We are humans, we want to talk now, be, about this. Be, you can you can be you can be very honest here. You're you're obviously mm -hmm. very very dedicated and motivated to 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 mm -hmm. creating this thing. Um, would you say that you are succeeding in not just inviting, sharing knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, bringing knowledge back, but actually going through the process of appropriation that Teresa talked about about sharing the power, the decision making, mm -hmm. the definition power. I think this is really a, you know, a, a, a process of trial and error also in trying to establish a post-colonial practice yep. where the power is shared. And of course, in some instances, it's really difficult. Uh, we've had projects where we've tried to establish exhibitions where you can see that the ex exhibit that someone would make would not, as it, with, uh, well, I think it was an example with the Ethiopian community where the mm. exhibitions that they were envisioning were not at all 
the exhibit that we would be making. Yeah. And then you can see, like with the Maori also, with, with the Waka project, it's really a lesson for yourself also mm -hmm. as an institution. We are not the ones who are in control constantly. Right. And that's, that's really, it makes you reflect, it puts a mirror in front of your practices, your common uh, practice, and how used you are in t of taking um, decisions for yeah. other peoples. And that's, yeah. I think, no, very I'm a, important. I'm a naive outsider but mm. just an, an obvious question would be could you um, invite one of the people from the source communities be it in Suriname or Maori or Ethiopia uh, as, a, as a curator we call them community curators, mm -hmm. yes. And you could, of course, there's, there's many people that you could invite as, who have been professionally trained that mm. you could invite as guest curators, yep. especially in, in, in some areas like uh, Maori in, in, in the U.S., uh, First Nations, uh, from, um, from Canada. There's many areas we, where you could very easily do it as a guest curator on a professional mm. level. Our curators, the community curators, they're not, they also say, ah, oh, now... Now we see what a museum is. People say that stuff is kept in museums. Some of our important things are kept in museums. So they're not, they're not experts in museology, mm. but they're experts, experts in the lived knowledge with, which is part of, this, of, of these objects, let's say, in the way that they want to be represented. They have very clear ideas on that. So in that sense, to yeah. me, we invite them as guest curators. And that's a vital addition to your knowledge exactly. and your practice. Exactly. Uh, I think we should... We should uh, uh, stick to this for now. Just last question. Do you believe this is the, the, the transformation you're going through and that you mm. yourself are actually helping to produce? Is this something going on in different musea in the Netherlands, elsewhere? Yes, I, I can see it at, at, uh, in, both in the Netherlands, I think, uh, but also at the European level. Mm. We're part of a European network where you can see that people are looking for new practices, yeah. trying to develop new practices. See, it's, it's, a, it's a thing of trial and error also, mm. seeing yeah. what works, what doesn't work, bringing people here or going to outside and going to do projects. For example, Mali, we don't bring people necessarily here to look at collections, but we uh, help in or help or work together in building new practices in uh, having new capacity building mm -hmm. so there's there's I think there's not just one recipe yeah. and I think that's being discovered by many museums in Europe uh, where you can see that there's different recipes to start establishing these partnerships good good news thank you very much I think uh, Teresa and and, and Laura I need to ask you to leave the stage unless, Teresa, you'd like to comment on this European development that Laura is taking part in. Finally, yeah. Maybe just very briefly to say that, of course, you know, this, is, uh, this is very exciting and I think it's something that's really a step forward and I'm, uh, I, I suppose my, my hope would be that what it'll, it'll derive in in the future is that uh, there will be collaborations to uh, Meet the needs of these communities where they live, and that in you know in the future, and whenever it's possible, and there's a felt need for this, uh, these museums will be able to collaborate in creating museums in these right. sites, mm -hmm. so that people will be able to appropriate the process more yeah. completely. Very good, Teresa, Laura. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you for having us.